these are just some shots of some other businesses and developments in the general area, although these um, establishments aren't all along State Street. Bronzeville, as you'll remember, grew east and west as well. So there's the Fort Dearborn Lodge. The top photo is um, just a photograph of Negroes, um, as it says, Negro contractors erecting an apartment building. Um, the People's Club Movement, Club, the People's Movement Clubhouse, as well as the Chicago Defender, which most of you are familiar with. One of the first new construction projects in the Black Belt occurred in 1916 when ground was broken for the Jordan Building at the northeast corner of State and 36th Street. It was an impressive three-story combination store and apartment building commissioned by the songwriter and music publisher. Joseph J. Jordan. The establishment of the Jordan Building was closely followed by a series of black-owned and black finance building projects erected along South State Street. With the establishment of Binga Bank in 1908, the vicinity of State and 35th Streets was rapidly transformed into the Wall Street of the black community, providing a variety of commercial enterprises. Up until the time of the Great Migration, the black, bu black business community was largely housed in existing residential and small storefront buildings, which were adapted for business purposes, often with unsatisfactory results. New construction was limited to a handful of small one- and two-story structures, which were erected as investments by white speculators who kept an eye on the growing potential of the black economic market. But the prosperity of blacks enabled them to separate the physical lo location of housing and their businesses, thus prompting investment in residential real estate. And here's another photograph of homes, as it says, occupied and in part owned by Negroes. And this is another view of uh, Bronzeville as well. <clears throat> Many well-known blacks lived, worked, and were socially invested in Bronzeville. This is a photograph of Ida B. Wells and her husband, Ferdinand Barnett, their children and grandchildren. And on the right is a picture of their home, which is still in existence on um, Martin Luther King Drive, which was formerly South Parkway, which was formerly Grand Boulevard. It's gone through an iteration of names. I believe this photograph was taken when her son was um, either returning or coming back from the war. These are other prominent citizens that lived in the area at the time. Uh, Miss Nell Calloway, they show um, a picture of her home, as well as Pauline James Lee, who was the president and founder of the Chicago University of music, again, with the prominent homes and businesses that um, they had at the time. Robert Giles was a druggist. Frank Gillespie was um, the founder of um, Liberty Life Insurance. Um, here's another gentleman, not so famous, but um, a Mr. Powell, who had a garage and oil filling station, which, of course, is now gone. Daniel Hell Williams was uh, the first African-American to establish Provident Hospital, um, and he was also well invested socially within the neighborhood. And again, we had our politicians, Oscar DePriest. His home is actually still in existence as well with uh, a marker um, in front of his house in the city on the south side within the Bronzeville area. Um, and there were other gentlemen um, involved in real estate. H.A. Watkins was a uh, very prominent real estate um, manager and agent within the neighborhood. He was involved also with the Met Church um, on 41st and King Drive. Um, he helped the church try to secure land to build a new facility, um, and he had a very successful real estate enterprise uh, in Bronzeville as well. Jesse Binga's development of Bronzeville was attractive to prominent black business owners. Anthony Overton and Robert, Ab Robert S. Abbott helped spur the economic development of the black metropolis. Anthony Overton, who was born in 1865 as well um, and died in 1947, 
commissioned the most important series of buildings, which included the Overton Hygienic Building, which is still standing and just went through a wonderful restoration. Um, uh, the Overton Hygienic Building was a combination store, office, and manufacturing building constructed in 1922. The seven-story Knights of Pythias Building, which was built in 1926 by a prominent lodge order, followed the plans designed by Chicago's first licensed black architect, which was Walter T. Bailey. And he also commissioned, Overton also commissioned the Chicago B Building, which was erected in 1929, which is also still in existence. And that housed the Chicago Bee newspaper. This is an interior shot of the Overton Hygienic Building, um, which was one of the most prominent economic, Overton which was one of the most prominent economic investors in the neighborhood during its development. He was um, born in Monroe, Louisiana, and grew up in Kansas. Um, Overton's father was a merchant um, and, he, and he influenced his son's decision to become an entrepreneur. Overton initially put his efforts into law and other professional endeavors, but he ultimately returned to business. He married and moved to Kingfish County, Oklahoma with thoughts of starting his own town, which was a common thing back in the day. But when he was physically threatened by whites in the area, he decided to move to Kansas City where he opened, originally opened the Overton Hygienic Manufacturing company in 1898. His company manufactured baking powder, flavoring extracts, and toilet preparations. The business was prosperous and Overton relocated his facilities to Chicago in 1911. In this new location, the product line grew from 52 to 72 products, including a line of cosmetics branded as High Brown. <clears throat> The Overton Hygienic Building was designed to be a four-story brick and terracotta structure. The second floor of the building was rented to black professionals, and the upper floors were used as offices for the Overton Enterprises. In anticipation of future growth, the elevator and mechanical shaft were built two stories above the structure to allow for additional floors constructed. So that big box that you see in the middle is the the shaft and the, um, and the mechanical room. <clears throat> this is a bit later photograph of the Overton Hygienic Building. Um, in an attempt to provide for the needs of the residents and build the economic strength of the community, Overton chartered the Douglas National Bank in 1922, which was also housed in the same building. Uh, he also established the Victory Life Insurance Company in 1924 with offices located at 3619 through 27 South State Street. This is a picture of the interior of the Victory Life Insurance Building. Ladies hard at work. And then this is a photograph of the Knights of uh, Pythias um, Temple, which was constructed or designed by Walter T. Bailey, as I had mentioned before. Um, he was one of the, um, a graduate of Tuskegee Institute where a large population, of, a large group of um, black architects got, were educated and became the first licensed architects throughout the country. The Chicago B Building, located at 3647 through 55 South State Street, in 1929, Overton hired Z. Errol Smith to design the headquarters of the Chicago Bee. Overton had previously retained Smith, who was a white, white Southside architect, to design the Overton Hygienic Building. The Chicago Bee Building was designed in the Art Deco style and featured apartments on the second floor with offices for the Bee on the ground floor. Later, the second floor would be converted to office space for the Overton Hygienic Company and the Douglas National Bank.